Dungeons and Daddies is a rowdy, horny, violent podcast for grown-ups. Content warnings can be found in the description. We come to this place for magic. We come to goof around, to laugh, to prank, to scam. Because we need that, all of us. That shagadelic feeling we get when the Family Guy theme begins to play and we turn into someone we've never been before. Not just transformed, but somehow reborn as Borat, Pickle Rick, and Austin Powers, and Napoleon Dynamite. Dazzling images of Garfield on a small cell phone screen. Aristocrats jokes that I can smell. Somehow, getting forced to do stand-up comedy for a complete stranger from Craigslist feels good in a place like this. Our tight fives feel like the best parts of us, and punchlines feel perfect and powerful. Because here, they are. Welcome to Dungeons and Daddies, not a BDSM podcast, a Dungeons and Dragons podcast about four teens from our world sent into an alternate realm, coming back to our world and rescuing everything from uh, eldritch horror that haunts us. You'll notice that I have given our saga cell very specifically and concisely this week. No riffraff, no bullshit, because we have a guest with us. We'll get to that in a second. My name we is have Fre- company. We have company. We have even. company, Freddie. We are on our best Guys, behavior. We're recording on the good China. My name is Freddie Wong. I play Taylor Swift, the anime-loving ranger teen who is currently inhabiting the role of Austin Powers in the Goofs <laughs> universe. So sort of many layers upon layers, <laughs> masks upon masks. This week's Taylor fact, we've been tasked by Anthony, as you all know, for today's episode, uh, many of us in various states of nervous energy. <laughs> the energy in the room is awful right it's, now. It's, the it's vibes, so bad. It's, so, it's completely fine to me. Yeah, it's well, upsetting. Yeah, you, it's wrong. The vibes wrong. may not be immaculate, but Taylor has nothing to worry about because Taylor has gone to an anime convention. And oftentimes you may know this, anime conventions will have, you know, in between panels, sometimes yes. the rooms will do like a little like stand-up showcase <laughs> or an open mic kind of thing. And Taylor has done it many times and has plenty of material that slays, that kills, as the comedians say. So he has not one drop, nary a drop of sweat on his brow today. Taylor's prepped and ready. I'm not sure about the rest of us, though. Hey, everybody. My name is Matthew Arnold. I play Lincoln Lee Wilson, the schooled at home soccer kid who kept his identity last episode. So it was just old Lincoln. So you're just going to get raw Link for his stand up bit. Little known fact Lincoln about Wilson raw. <laughs> raw. <laughs> yeah, that's his first album. OK, so a little known fact about Lincoln. Just keep it nice and simple so we can get to the goofs. Look, Lincoln's realistic. He knows deep down he's probably not going to be a premier league soccer player so he has thought about what he would do <laughs> is if he, he stand up if he couldn't no if he couldn't <laughs> become a premier league soccer player what would that be premier league soccer coach oh. <laughs> that's, his, that's his backup plan that's it Those <laughs> are the ones plan. Right. that's his backup how many, plan can I ask you a question how many coaches are players are former players a lot of them okay. you usually have to be a pretty good soccer player to get into a coaching gig okay yeah okay. Uh, okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Will Cambos. I play Normal Oak, perpy, <laughs> Perky Peppy, Chipper Cheery, School Spirit, Mascot Kid, who was turned into Borat with Pickle Rick on his shoulder in the last episode. <laughs> and so that's who I am at this moment. And uh, in solidarity with the writers of the Writers Guild of America, I am refusing to cross the dad fact picket line this week. That's right. Union strong. I'm not going to scab like you two. No dad <laughs> fact for Will this week. Wow. Wow. It might be over by the time this episode (laughs) (laughs) ends. All because of you, Will. Good job. Just because I was me. You held in there. Hi, my name is Beth May, and I play Scary Marlowe, a goth punk seeker of darkness who is not like the other warlocks, not even like regular scary because scary got turned into napoleon dynamite and i should note for those of you listening along at home beth has come fully dressed as napoleon dynamite. yeah so we can take pictures of beth doing her set with a costume and everything yes you know i see overnight shipping and i press yes please that has the wig the glasses the vote for pedro shirt um, the whole works yeah 
In fact, when Matt let her into the building, Matt I, mistook I her for just a regular person dressed as Napoleon. <laughs> 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 it was you. You run into those occasionally. You run into those people. Yeah. That and when I came into this room, I went, oh my God, it's my ex. Oh no, okay, it's Napoleon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Beth. Oh, oh, what a ride. I can't believe Anthony dated Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> yeah, I should have never let her go. Fun fact about Scary this week is that she's never watched, heard, consumed <laughs> comedy. <laughs> If there was a blanket medium for misery that wasn't just heavy metal or poetry, like if there was a specific stand-up, you know, kind of form called misery, she would be about that. But, you know, comedy is not, it's not where she's at. I guess poetry is kind of stand-up misery if you think about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just sad stand-up. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Anthony Birch. I'm your dad. And I want to explain Boo! context. <laughs> I want to explain context both for you, the listener, if you missed last episode, you should probably go back and listen to the last episode. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to make no sense. I hope this is someone's first episode of the <laughs> yeah. show, I got to say. And, and if it's your first, get ready for they're it to gone. be your last. This is the first they're gone. They heard Freddy say, I'm an anime teen who's Austin Powers now. Yeah. <laughs> and he just turned off the podcast. Uh, but before I get into what we are doing this week, let me introduce our special guest, Tori. Tori, why don't you uh, say hi and say, you know, where people can find you if you want people to find your social media and stuff. <laughs> if hi, that's Tori. what you want. Hi, Tori. <laughs> hi, Tori. <laughs> hi. <laughs> Um, I'm Tori Shaw, and I am really excited to play this game with you guys today. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And I'm ready to have some fun. To explain briefly and summarize what we're doing here today, the four teens in our little fantasy adventure went to a different world called the Goofs Realm. And the Goofs Realm is based entirely upon jokes and goofs and scams and stuff like that. So in order to survive the unearth-like atmosphere of Goofs Realm, they had to transform into things that were objectively funny in order to survive. And so <laughs> in this case, Freddie Taylor turned into Austin Powers, Will Normal turned into Borat with Pickle Brick on his shoulders, and Beth Scary turned into Dimbolian Dynamite. You make it sound like we had a choice. Yeah. yeah. And, well, you, we picked, you picked the cards we randomly. Did not. We yeah. picked these cards at random, and these and horrible I, roles were foisted on us. And I watched Napoleon Dynamite yesterday for the first time in 15 years, and I, objectively, objectively funny. <laughs> yeah. Objective. Okay. The part where he goes, "Gosh, like, come on." <laughs> what <laughs> what we were going to do? Me? Oh yeah, and you decided that you would instead of turning into something objectively funny, you would defend yourself with something objectively funny. So Link, uh, Matt's character, has just been carrying around Garfield the movie on a loop on his phone, starring Bill Murray. So what happened at the end of last episode was that you met with Hermie the Unworthy, the character you came here to find, and he challenged you to a stand-up competition. So as I said last week, the way that we were going to do a stand-up competition is to have somebody else judge it objectively. And the only way I could think to do that, because all of our friends already know us and know what we find funny and it would be too biased, I went on to Craigslist, made an offer for somebody to come out and check out. Can our you can you read the Craigslist post yeah. actually? Because I think that for those of you who are not following us on social, this was a objectively funny Craigslist post. Oh, and also before we get into this, Tori, quick question: You're familiar with Dungeons and Dragons, right? Yes. Okay, that's okay. what we're doing. It's not going to matter that much. <laughs> it doesn't matter. All right. So uh, the <laughs> Craigslist post was critique our stand up comedy for money. DTLA. <laughs> Oh, this job ahead. entails sitting in a chair for an hour and ranking on a 10-point scale five different comedians doing comedy sets of around five minutes in length. Your reactions will be recorded via audio for a podcast. Applicant must be fluent in English and ideally not know anything at all about Freddie Wong or the podcast Dungeons & Daddies <laughs> Do Not Google It. <laughs> so, Tori, can I ask you, what was your Craigslist browsing session? You know, like, what was happening when you found that? Um... Well, I'm a starving actor and I needed to do something other than Uber. <laughs> and yeah. I needed to get myself out to LA and around creative people. So I saw the money, I saw the description, <laughs> I said, I can do that. So And great, you've great. never heard of And you haven't heard Freddie of Freddie Wong. Wong. I have not. Good, yeah. God. Good. And you haven't Googled it. Well, we hadn't heard Your of Tori's favorite uh, stand up either. Yeah. So Yeah. You know, I cheated, I Googled, but I didn't read <gasps> I didn't read much. I okay. was just making well, I'll sure. I'll tell you this, Tori. It specifically was... said, don't Google it. <laughs> <laughs> so I got some bad news for you. <laughs> I had to make sure it was a safe. That's, that's, that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. That's valid. Yeah. That's valid. Yeah. That's yeah. Everybody listening, if you're on Craigslist, you got to do that at In least. In fact, if somebody says, don't Google me before beating, <laughs> yeah. you, you, you should Google. Should Google. You should Tori, Google. Tori, you taught everybody a good lesson today. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you don't need our apartment number. We'll just bring yeah. you up to the apartment. You get yeah, they never gave Tori the apartment number. I was like, just meet me outside. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a short brown man wearing a suit 
<laughs> Check it. Don't Google I, me. Okay, Meet me outside. I, I have to say this. I did prepare like my entire like thing. I was like, this is going to be a man that takes this job. Because <laughs> no, right? surely no woman would not, <laughs> not Google it. Thing. Would be but, crazy yeah, enough. You're smart enough to Google it. And hell yeah. Okay. So women power. I'm excited you're here. I did prepare for if you were going to be a man. <laughs> That's all good. It's I, all good. I, I, in my defense, I did ask some questions like, so how's parking there? Do I need to show up early? And can I see an Instagram? And yeah. he responded to every every That's question great. that I That's asked. Good. That's good. Or I wouldn't have come out. So. That's true. That's yeah. very wise. Yeah. Very wise indeed. And you guys are awesome. Oh, well, thank you. I feel so very far, safe. Wait till you hear yeah. that's, about to, very that's safe. about to change. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll a D5. Well, I'm going to roll D6 and then ignore the 6. Uh, to see who gets to go first in our stand-up session. Uh, and so we'll go from can we take Can we table set in character for a second? God, if you want so to. I just know, okay, so you no, guys are just such nervous Nellies that no, all you so want to do is push us off. He's doing is to, all I want to know is normal, who is trying to detect the anchor. Do I sense the anchor in this room? Yes. Where it, is it? It's in Scam Likely's back pocket. Scam Likely has the anchor. Yes. Okay. But it's not like it we is Scam Likely. We Scam Likely. <laughs> it's long <laughs> for <the> <laughs> Will it help if I put my sunglasses on? Because it's a little... You, you do whatever you want. Will it help you? Because it's a little bright in here and... Will it make you feel better? You might look yeah. too cool. Oh, no, shit, too, too cool. cool. <laughs> no, no, you can put them on. You can put them on if, the, if, if it's too now bright. Now I'm like an agent. Now I'm like intimidated. <laughs> and Tori, uh, while, while the stand's going on, you can feel free to comment, talk, heckle, laugh, <laughs> not laugh. Whatever you want to do is Ooh, all, it's stage. It's all up for, for grabs Take for Take a you. smoke break. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> honestly, yeah. If one of us was so bad, you just left. <laughs> what a move that would be. Put on be. my Instagram. Yeah. Okay. Is that all the table setting you wanted that to do? That was just what I wanted to know. Was, cool, cool, was yes. the, is the anchor. The anchor you were searching for is okay. nearby. So the room you're in is a featureless black void with a single spotlight in the center. Just like the comedy store, am I right? The spotlight illuminates a stand-up mic with behind it a uh, two-dimensional brick wall behind it. That, like, if you look at it from the side, it's just not there. But if you look at it from the front, it is there. Um, is there a stool? Yes, there is a stool. There's oh, a bottle of God, water. There's some real. stuff you can do. Movement. There's a little stand. You can do whatever you need to do. You do have, it is a two-drink minimum, unfortunately. Uh, yep. Okay, so I'm going to roll a die, and I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, and we got a one. So, Lincoln, it is your turn first. Go ahead. I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick, but you should keep going. Does, he get, does Lincoln get an intro from, like, who's emceeing oh, this yeah. show? So Scam likely goes, I guess I'm the MC then. Okay, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a great time, Tori. Canonically, you're Tori in this game. And uh, first up, it's the man with no plan. It's Lincoln Lee Wilson. Get Lincoln a round of applause, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Wait, Normal, do you know what we're, what are we doing, Normal? What? So what's the deal with tight fives? Uh, what are you? It's it, five minutes of comedy, baby. Wait, what? You've got to do five minutes oh, of comedy. Okay. You've got to make laugh. Oh, sorry, I've never. Hi, what's your name? Tori. Tori, you're not with Hermie or anything, right? Hermie? No, okay, no, that's good. No, no. I'm sorry. I'm not really funny. Um, I'm all my friends here. They've got. They're gonna be the funny ones. They turned into funny people. I'm not though. But luckily for you, I do have the funniest movie. Me and my dad watch this movie every day. So I just thought I'd show you some of the funniest parts of Garfield the movie. If I you love don't... movies. Okay. Oh wait, I got plug. Are you hurry? Do I plug it in? Okay. I think I got a plug. Matt is. Oh God. Matt is sitting in front of uh, our guest here with a laptop. Okay. It's pretty good music at the beginning. Let me cut to the funny. Let me get to the funny parts. I mean, honestly, the whole movie is pretty funny. Oh, so right here, I just want to say I have two dads, and I'm adopted. And the beginning of this movie always makes me emotional because they have Garfield here, who they got like it's not their real kid, right? Because it's a cat. And anyways, yeah, I love it. It really makes me feel like my dad's. So I don't know how much you know about Garfield. Here, okay, he's a sleepy cat. Here we go. Just. That's him. Oh. <laughs> I hate Mondays. <laughs> so, he says I hate Mondays a lot because he hates Mondays. Um, we often watch the movie on Sundays, and my dads, they go, oh, I feel that. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, how much do I, time do I have? Oh, there's so much funny stuff in this movie. One second. I used um, to love Garfield, actually. Oh. oh. Right? Yeah. I, the books were too hard for me to read, so my dad got me this movie, so I would... It was a cartoon, right? It was a... There's a cartoon? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm going to have to check that out. Okay, so here's... here's. Oh, God. Garfield's such a mischievous little cat. Here's what he does. So that's supposed to be his friend, and he wants milk. Jump in your little spacecraft. 
The nation thanks you. But check this out. He's not being nice here. Come to Papa, baby. I can see everything. Hey, got the milk. Wait. Got milk? <laughs> so, uh, this is really good. Um, how much time do I have left? I got a lot of moments here, but here, look, I don't want to explain the whole movie. If you haven't seen it, I want to ruin it for honestly. I feel like I just ruined the movie. That's not very funny. Um, I won't spoil the whole thing, but. It means a lot to me because I'm an only kid, and then Garfield, they, they, he adopts a dog, and he gets jealous of him. So I'll just skip to the end here. Um, he saves his dog friend. Hit the floor. And then at the end, here we go. This. Oh, that wasn't very nice. No, this is really funny. He shoved the dog. <laughs> you got it. I, sorry I spoiled that joke. I was, here we go. It, yeah. See, they're together now. Just one big happy family. Oh. Yeah. Hit the floor. <laughs> Psych. He, he pushed, doesn't want him. He pushed the dog he pushed again. The dog. Oh, I was just kidding, though. Down you go. Psych. <laughs> he got him again. <laughs> and one, okay. It's a nice movie. No, it's not. That's Garfield. Oh, man. Every time. Every time. Then we usually get ice cream after that movie. And then um, that's what me and my dads do every night. Well, not every night. Every Sunday night. So I hope I hope that was funny for you. Uh, I really recommend. Oh, there's also a, there's a sequel. Uh, which is pretty good too. It's about like another cat. He's really rich in like Britain, like a bunch of rich cats. That sounds you know what very they call it? interesting. What? The Aristocats. Isn't there already a movie? It's a joke about the Aristocrats. <laughs> <laughs> That's a. Uh... Okay, is that five minutes? That's good. Okay, thank you so much. Um, anyways, this is gonna be really good. That was just. I just hope you like that movie. Um, my friends, my friends are now gonna do their tight fives. Thank you so much. Woo! Yeah. Okay. I love movies, so. <laughs> Anthony, Anthony has come out of the bathroom wearing Joker makeup. Uh, okay, who's up next? Uh, let me get a die. Number one, so that means oh. it is Austin Powers' turn. Go ahead. Give go, him, you can do it, Taylor. Let's go ahead and give Austin come on, Taylor. the biggest round of applause, everybody. He makes yeah, all right, right, Austin Powers. You're pretty good. I wish I was you, though. <laughs> Yeah, baby, all right. What a groovy crowd we've got here today. Tori, so nice to meet you. And nice to meet well, you. Well, I've just got a little bit of comedy, a little bit of material from my act, which I'll, I'll, I'll tell you now. You know Hayao Miyazaki, have you heard? Hayao Miyazaki <laughs> did a harem anime. Not a lot of people know this. Do you know what an real? You've got a little bit of a befuddled look on your face. Let me back up for a second. <laughs> Do you know what anime is? Yes. Oh, great. We're already off to a great start. Well, do you know what a harem anime is? No. Very quickly, for those of you who don't know, a harem anime is an anime where the main character is surrounded by a bunch of love interests. I know what that's like as Austin Powers. Well, not a lot of people know. <laughs> now, see, not a lot of people know this, but anyway, Hayao Miyazaki, beloved children's animation writer, he did a harem anime. Not a lot of people know about this one. A little uncredited side project. You know what it was called? It was called Pixar's Planes. <laughs> and the main character was a talking fucker D7. LBA. <laughs> 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 oh, <my God. laughs> it's a new Gundam movie coming out too. <laughs> They're gonna do a prequel for this one. They're gonna show, for the first time, in cinema anime history, they're gonna show the RX-01. That's right, all the way back at the beginning. We're not talking about the 78. We're not talking about the 78 Mark II. The RX-01 turns out it's just a gun. One guy, probably Chinese, invents the gun, shoots it, another guy goes, damn, and he says, gun, damn, wait a minute, I think we've got something here. <laughs> Animation used to be pretty crazy. <laughs> you ever seen The Lion King? Tori, have you seen The Lion King? I have. One of my favorite Disney movies. One of the most popular Disney movies ever made. Me, I have a lot of mixed feelings about The Lion King. A lot of mixed emotions. I think that movie sends a lot of mixed signals. Like when I saw it, I cried my eyes out when Mufasa died. I'm sure you did too. I'm not afraid to admit it. Trampled by a stampede of wildebeests. <laughs> Terrifying. 
Now I don't have a dad because my mom raised me ever since I was a wee little lad all by herself. And during that whole scene, I was just thinking about my mom and what would happen if she died and what a scary world that would be if she was dead and she wasn't there for me to comfort me, to tuck me in, tell me everything was all right. It scared me, honestly. Honestly, it did. <laughs> I think everyone has the same experience with The Lion King. It's because The Lion King is the first movie that makes you really consider what it looks like if one of your parents dies. It's also the first movie you see that makes you consider what it looks like when a female lion wants to fuck a male lion. <laughs> oh, shit. Like I said, a lot of conflicting emotions for me. I think that's all the time I got. <laughs> is that right? Good job, Taylor. Sex sells, good. Sex all right, sells. very good. Oh, thank you so much. You've been a wonderful audience. Good job, Taylor. Not nearly as reactive. Thank you so much, everybody. Oh, yeah. I knew my friends would kill it. Good job, Taylor. You did the best, man. Oh, thank you. That's that so means good. so much coming from you. Of course, a lot of that material's old hat, as they say. Okay. <laughs> I realized I completely misunderstood the assignment. After <laughs> 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 uh, next up is the police Yeah, all right. Who goes to dive? Scary. Nice. Scary. You, you, you got this, Scary. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug something in, too. Gosh. You got this. Oh, no. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. Hi, I'm Napoleon Dynamite. Freaking obviously. Gosh! <laughs> Saw Taylor's stand up just now. That's pretty much the worst stand up ever. Gosh! <laughs> so, five minutes, huh? Scientifically, not a lot you could do in five minutes. Kind of setting me up for failure. Gosh! Because <laughs> <laughs> if I had five, spend five minutes with someone, I spend two minutes breaking their neck with my ninja skills. My neck breaking ninja skills. I'm in three minutes enjoying the scenery. Hold for laughter. Oh, wait, I wasn't supposed to say that. Um, how's everyone doing tonight? We're doing good, great. good. Doing great. Yeah, it just says crowd work here, so freaking go to work, crowd. <laughs> so, looks, looks, looks more like crowd leisure. <laughs> like the opposite of work. <laughs> um, what else? What else? Uh, I'm in the I'm in the Happy Hands Club. Gosh, that's actually not what it sounds like. It's not a jerk off club or anything <laughs> like that. <laughs> although, although there is this one guy Kevin class who's a major jerk, and I want him off the club. <laughs> so there's that. What else? What else? You got this, girl. Um, the vet said we had to put a, put down our llama Tina. So I said Tina. You're not as good as other llamas. <laughs> Most people think it's pretty funny that I can't get a girlfriend, even though I have like nunchuck, nunchuck skills. Cause I thought the girls only like guys with skills. It's like, gosh, isn't that a, just enough to make you a friggin' sexist? My, un my uncle Rico's a sexist. Here's my impression of him. Why is a woman wear white at her wedding? Why? The dishwasher should always match the stove and fridge. <laughs> oh, shit. I, I hate it when guys say that a woman belongs in the kitchen. How on earth is she going to clean the rest of the house from there? <laughs> oh, shit. See, that's still me being Uncle Rico. <laughs> um, sexes are bad. I'm done doing impressions of him. Want to hear my impression of Goofy? Yeah. Gorsh. <laughs> <laughs> My brother and I built a time machine. Doesn't work, but if he did, you know. But if it did, you know where I'd go. Where? Back in time, so I could do some more sexist jokes. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> um, more, more crowd work. Um, friggin' Tori, like your shirt. Thank you. My friend Pedro ran for class president against a girl, Summer. I beat her on the dance floor, which is better than beating her for not doing the dishes. <laughs> Oh, gotcha. That was Uncle Rico again. <laughs> Gosh. And then I run off stage. Oh, God. Oh. Wow. Yeah. That was, that was quite the... funny, wasn't it? I don't know. That, that was, was quite was funny. It's pretty mean. I'm pretty intimidated about following that act. I'm not going to lie, guys. Yeah. All right, next up, uh, the person who said they're intimidated has to follow that <laughs> oh, act. Oh, God. So it's Borat with Pickle Rick on his shoulder, everybody. Give him a round of applause. You, you got this normal. How are we doing, everybody? You got this normal. So, uh, Satori, are you familiar with Rick and Morty? 
A little. Good. Well, I'm the guy from Rick and Morty, but I'm a pickle. I turned into a pickle. It's from the funniest episode of the show. And uh, I'm a Borat. You know Borat from Glorious Benefit Make Kazakhstan, yes? Yes. Oh, pickle Rick is here on my shoulder. You use theater of the mind to see both of us at the same time. Very nice. <laughs> hey, it's me, Pickle Rick. Wubble, wubble, dub, dub. And my name is Borat. And you know, even though I'm a talking pickle, and I am journalist from Glorious Nation of Kazakhstan, deep inside we both of us have one thing in common. This trapped soul of a confused and terrified teenage boy. That's right, Pickle Rick, and it is not easy being a teenager these days when your dad isn't proud of you and the boy you like betrays you and your friends are constantly fighting and your family is responsible for unleashing a chaos god that destroys the world. Maybe how you said it, Borat. And your sister is the chosen one and your mom is a centrist and your uncle is a gun nut and you have so much back knee that your back looks like one of those zoomed out pictures from the Hubble Space Telescope. Okay, Jesus Christ, Borat, to get it. We're a sad, miserable little boy. But at least we got one thing to be thankful for. We don't go to Chaparral High School, am I right? Oh, yeah. Screw Chaparral, man. Um, hey, Borat, how many Chaparral really? students does it take to screw in a light bulb? I do not know, Pickle Man. I don't know either, because I took math at Chaparral. What was that? Hey, careful, Pickle Man. There could be Chaparral student here tonight. Yeah. Relax. You got to be over 21 to get in here. That rules out most of the Chaparral senior class. <laughs> Wubble, <laughs> dub, dub, dub. <laughs> you know, education system very different where I come from. In Home Village, school principal is three-legged goat. Gym teacher is herd of feral cats. How crazy. But our students very grateful. They say we are so lucky to be here. Most of us are transfer students from Chaparral. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. Very nice. <laughs> hey, speaking of very nice, I gotta say the students at Chaparral are some of the nicest kids in all of San Dimas. Nice. <laughs> Borat, I did a show at the Chaparral High School and let me, at their cafeteria, and let me tell you, that was the happiest crowd I've ever seen. Of course, they were happy burping, Pickle Man. You are the least disgusting vegetable their lunchroom has ever served. Great success. <laughs> They're already dead. <laughs> now, now, seriously, Chaparral ain't all that bad. Uh, one of their <laughs> brightest bulbs is here on stage tonight. I uh, give it up for aspiring thespian Hermie the Unworthy. Oh, hi, thank you. Uh, and uh, oh. what is Hermie? unworthy of an acting career for starters he stinks <laughs> tell me did where did this kid learn how to perform stella adler or smell a badler p.u that's a good one i'm sensitive about that whoa 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 uh, what are you doing pickle man oh relax bobo i'm just roasting Hermie the unworthy or should i say the uninteresting since we're always forgetting he's here <laughs> the, oh. the unrememberable since he's so boring his dad abandoned him am i right Oh. Yeah. Uh, hey, that is a Killed really it. mean Rick. I think Hermie is sensitive about that and proud of his acting. Oh, lighten up. It's all good fun. I mean, you know, we're just busting your chops, Hermie. It's all goofs. It's all it's all good time, right? We didn't hurt your feelings, did we? Uh, um, uh, he is crying, you stupid pickle man. Oh, jeez, no. Oh, oh boy. Look, I just, it's a fun thing. It's a roast. You roast people that you like, and I like you, Hermie, okay? So it's just a fun thing. Look, look, I'll roast everybody else, okay? We're on the same team. It's all fun. Uh, Taylor, hey, hey, Taylor, how you doing? Ah. Taylor, you're, you know, who's I'm kind of pretty groovy, baby. You've got less brain cells than your dad has limbs. Because they all got cut oh, off. Oh, normal. Isn't that fun? It's fun. It's fun, guys. It's funny. You know, Link, Link yeah. what's the deal with you and Scary, man? What? Just stop pretending you don't like her. Just fuck already. I Get it like, over oh, with. I do like her. I mean, I like you, too. I like uh, all of us. Uh, uh, oh, you're okay, man. Okay, well, uh, it's just, you know, it's a good, it's a joke, Kirby. We're joking. We're just having fun. This is what mm. people do when they like each other. Scary. Well, boy, you got so many issues. You're like a, like a comic book store. You got so many issues up there. Gosh. I bet, uh, I bet your medicine cabinet at home looks like one of those big jelly bean jars you see at the fair. <laughs> how, many, how many pills well, does she pop me, every day? Jelly. Yeah, that works for both of them. <laughs> uh, well, uh, uh, oh, God. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, no, I'm sorry, didn't... everybody. That was my time. Uh, right. Hermie, I really like you. Uh, and Taylor, you know, you and your dad are going to hit it off. You're going to be great. Uh, Link, I'm sorry, man. You tell Scary you like her in your own way, in your own time. I, scary. I, like you, scary. I, I don't really mean what I said. I just, uh, that's my time. I'm going to go. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> you okay, good, right good job, Noel.
A round of applause for, for Normal. For, hey, Taylor, for, for do you think it's normal? It's normal okay? I think you work on tightening his act up a little well, bit. It's a little I'm, flabby in yeah, the middle. Yeah, that's not okay, what I'm worried so, about. So finally up uh, is the, my son who I did abandon. Good one. Uh, <laughs> Herman the Unworthy. All right, here I go. <laughs> Boo. No applause, huh? Boo. No. no. I'm sorry, Hermie. No. I want to throw my shoe at Hermie. Thank you. Thank you, Tori. Tori's got my back. <laughs> so what did, what did Two-Face say when I asked him out for drinks? What? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what did Scarecrow say when I asked him out for drinks? What? Oh. <laughs> what happened when I asked Clayface out for drinks? What? I said yes. <laughs> Shit. But Gotham, it's so corrupt. All our representatives are Republicans. Democrats aren't much better, but Republicans call themselves the party of Lincoln, which is technically true, but only in the way that Nazis could call themselves the party of the man who killed Hitler. My, <laughs> <laughs> My partner Harley is non-binary, which makes it very hard to dirty talk them. Yeah, do it. Yeah, you're a bad, you're a bad uh, person, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, you're a filthy little, little, little cr criminal. <laughs> There's nothing sexy about being woke. That's what all the anti-woke people forget. And I consider myself a woke person, but sometimes it's pretty hard. Like, I think God put the flash on the earth as a test. Someone would be like, did you hear what he did? He punched somebody who asked for a photo, then he kidnapped a girl and her baby, and he let the baby put a bullet in its mouth. And I have to be like, they punched somebody who asked for a photo, then kidnapped a girl and her baby, and let the baby put a bullet in its mouth. But I love comedy. I'm a big fan of comedy. Hey, you want to see an impression? This yeah. is my impression of the world's biggest Wes Anderson fan watching the world's funniest Wes Anderson movie. <laughs> I volunteer. If you couldn't hear that over audio, I went. <laughs> I volunteer with the Arkham Project, which is a nonprofit that provides a place for to talk for suicidal kids from ages zero to twenty-four. No matter who you are, from ages zero to twenty-four, Arkham Project will help. And the reason that I do that is because I believe that every life is worth saving and that there's always hope. Until you turn twenty-five. <laughs> Once you turn twenty-five, you know the score. You finish your triplicative life, and you driven the Batmobile around the block. You can decide if you want to buy the thing or not. Oh, I'm supposed to keep living? For what, to turn 30 and get weird back pain that never goes away? And then at 40 you realize you, life didn't turn out the way you wanted to, so you just cheat on your husband until like you turn 50 and then you don't like Mexicans anymore for some reason? <laughs> a while ago, I Googled how many sleeping pills does it take to kill yourself? And you know what Google gave me? You know what it gave me? Links to suicide prevention hotlines and a little message saying help is available. That's not helpful, that's judgy. Nothing else on Google works that way, incidentally. You don't Google cookie recipe and it goes, you know a diet high in sugar can lead to type 2 diabetes. Yeah, I know, that's not why I Google. I want a snickerdoodle and to die. I think suicide takes courage, or at least doing it with sleeping pills does because you gotta buy them from a store. But you don't wanna go to the checkout line with only sleeping pills, so it's like when you bought condoms as a kid, you gotta get some decoy items. Don't mind me, I'm just a normal citizen who needs two boxes of Captain Crunch, one orange, and 17 boxes of z -Quil. Yes, I would like a bag. <laughs> So I have depression and anxiety, thankfully, because those two, as we all know, are the sexy mental illnesses. Look, we can all pretend that okay. mental health is equally important, but we all know nobody likes schizophrenics. But if you say, I wake up every day and my life feels empty and it's a constant struggle to survive, society, we're like, uh. or if I'm like, oh, I'm constantly panicking because I feel like I'm not good enough. We're like, no, oh, no, you're good enough, baby. <laughs> or the best one is, I have an addiction. Oh, he's really fun at parties, but sometimes he gets sad. He drinks himself into an early grave and he's got stubble. He's so hot. Speaking of depressed people, the Batman. They say, they say I want to kill Batman. That's not true. I'm like a dog chasing cars. If I finally caught one, I would have sex with it on its parents' graves. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. I'm the Joker. I poisoned your drinks. Uh, what? I, I didn't really. I was part. Oh, okay. That was a joke. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Guys, I think Hermie. Is Hermie okay? Uh, uh, or is that the Joker? <laughs> is Hermie just Anthony? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Tori. <laughs> if you wouldn't mind uh, ranking everybody from one to 10, not ranking them, but giving them a score from one to 10. And whenever you're ready, just let us know what your scores are. And, and we'll, any thoughts you have. For and any each, thoughts Any all. feedback, oh, any yeah, sort yeah, of, yeah. critique. <laughs> ways we can improve. We're here to get better. We're here to learn. <laughs> I'm still processing the Joker. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have this well in hand. Hey, Hermie, are you? What's going on over there, man? Uh, it's, all, it's all part of, it's all a joke. It's all okay. a big joke. That's the thing is I'm, a, I'm an agent of chaos. I say what we're all thinking. Oh. I say we're all thinking about how I'd be better off dead. Okay. So, gosh, for one thing, like, you, you think that, I mean, this is really hard to act in character as scary, but also <laughs> Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> but gosh, I want to die more. No, I do. No, me. 
Your, your stand-up was about not liking women. My stand-up was about not liking myself. I win. I freaking. I win. Okay, I think I'm ready. Okay, Tori, <laughs> whenever you are ready, please take it away. Who went first? Lincoln? That was me. Hi. Lincoln. Hi, Tori. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Did you enjoy the whole show? Yeah. Okay, that's this great. This is great. Yeah, they're all my friends. I hope you had a good time. This is really fun. Okay. Okay, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can grade me. I'm uh, used to bad grades. It's okay. I gave you a five out of ten. <laughs> oh. Oh, out of ten? <laughs> Okay. Sorry, I've been watching a lot of comedy this week. On- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have nothing to apologize for. Five is very high. Yeah, that's very okay, good. Okay, okay. A little bit higher than I would have thought. I, I thought it was good because you were very <laughs> vulnerable and engaged with me. Oh, okay. And that's something that I've noticed in all comedians that really grabs my attention is when they're vulnerable and engaged with the audience. That's really nice. So you did a really good job oh, thank you. doing that. Do you think, are you going to watch the Garfield movie? <laughs> Probably not. No, oh, okay. <laughs> but I feel like I ruined but it for your you. delivery was vulnerable and engaging. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so that was good. That right. was enjoyable. Well, guys, um, you can only go up from there. That's good. <laughs> you can go down. There are four <laughs> <levels below time. laughs> In fact, you can equally go up or down, baby. <laughs> okay. So th- I went next. It's me, Austin Powers. <laughs> Austin. Okay. okay. Yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Do I make you laugh? <laughs> <laughs> Do I? You can't try to get your score up again. Now. <laughs> um, can I just tell you my thoughts and not the score? Shit. <laughs> 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 Nothing faces me, baby. You can give me the whole shebang. <laughs> I give you a three. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> You might have picked the wrong wait, hold person. On. <laughs> I'm very bl- honest. This is great. <laughs> great. Wait, wait, hold on. You're putting me lower than the Garfield movie. <laughs> he He's, was engaging and vulnerable. It's okay, it's Taylor. Taylor, Taylor let, her, let her just take the feedback, man. You shut the hell up, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think if you're playing a character, like the acting needs to be a little more real. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take it back. It's the best thing you've ever done. I knew what I was doing. Go on. Um, I really liked uh, the joke at the end. I think the inappropriate sex jokes are really funny. Oh, keep that in mind. Luckily, that happens to be my whole persona, baby. Especially when you're talking about the Lion King. Oh, yeah. That was funny to throw that in at the end. That was good. Well, thank you for your feedback, I think. Sorry. <laughs> Next was Scary Marlo. It's Napoleon Dynamite, gosh. Okay, Napoleon. Next was Napoleon Dynamite, and I gave Napoleon a five, and I thought the the sexist jokes were really funny. (laughs) (laughs) I thought that they were great. Can you imagine the score you would have gotten if it was a man? I mean, yeah, it would have been really high. (laughs) Gosh. (laughs) And complimenting my shirt was a good, was really good to I like that was good to throw in there. And then your, is it your dad? A joker. No, no, no. Our next is Will. It was so memorable, Bone <laughs> and Pickle Rick. So memorable, you forgot to Sorry. give me a grade. <laughs> okay. I gave you a four, and I really, you really grabbed my attention with your energy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very nice thing to no, say. No, but I mean that in, in, a, in an extreme way. <laughs> In, a, in an extremely good way. Uh, ah, got him. Got yeah. him. Yeah. It's that, a, this, this review is a whole roller coaster for me. <laughs> it's great. If you keep that energy during your routines, it, you know, I think it'll be great. Okay, we'll keep that in mind. Thank you very much for joining us. Before we get to Hermit the Unworthy, I'm going to take a quick average of all those scores. So your average score is 4.25 out of 10. Now let's see how my son I Hey, Hermit, wait. It was out of five, right? It was out of 10. It was out of 10. Oh, oh. <laughs> you thought you got a 5 no. out of 5? She said I was vulnerable. That's the most important thing, though. Okay. Oh, boy. Okay, so what did you think of my boy, Hermie the Unworthy, the Joker? Okay, let's see. <laughs> I gave the Joker a 4. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yes. <laughs> because. Well, well, well. Well, well, well. <laughs> because. How's it feel, Anthony? <laughs> Just because it was very fast. Mm-hmm. Oh. That's the only reason. The delivery was so fast that it was hard to catch all the, the jokes and stuff. That's fine. I'll kill myself. 
<laughs> but that's an easy tweak, right? Killing myself? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hurry, you did better than normal, Shut though. Shut the fuck up. Okay, man. okay. <laughs> should I just, oh, no, you did should I just Taylor. crawl out the door now? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, actually, that's, that's basically all we need you for. So, okay. <laughs> Are we going to take a pause? <laughs> okay, well, that was great. Thank you so much, Tori, for being an objective audience member. Is there anything you'd like to say to the folks at home before you, you head out? Thank you so much. This was a great opportunity. Beautiful. Oh, no, thank you. Yay! Yeah, you did a great job. Yeah. Thank you. And then the light shut off and Tori just disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> Into the ether. All right, all of you go back to your normal forms oh, with hey. the, the, oh, okay. the jokes complete. Thank God, Jesus. Garfield is deleted Thank from your the phone. Christian Lord. What? No! <laughs> no! No, 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 no. And Scam Wait. likely goes, well, that was a great little bit of stand-up we had. Oh, you really fucked the pooch on that one, son. You really messed that one up. Okay, boys, what do you want? I can give you anything you need. Mr. Likely? Mm, is that your yeah. name? Uh, hi, I'm, I'm Normal Oak, sir. Uh, it's nice to meet you. So uh, to get those hilarious performances you saw, we had to sign this thing called a blood pack, and the rules of the blood pack were that we have to kill you. Oh. But I don't want to kill you. I don't think we want to kill you. You see, you're really good at scams. Do you know any way to, for us we could scam our way oh, out yeah. of having to kill you? And then maybe also if we could have the anchor that you have, please. That would be great. Yeah, if you just get us out of here, we don't have to. I mean, we probably could. Maybe that could really be the strong. scam. You get us out of here, you give us the anchor, and then we rip the other guy off, and that's a scam we oh, can yeah, do to get we out. we should scam the other guy. Hermie's like, why don't you just actually kill him? Hermie, dude, it seemed like you were happy. Like, you like your dad yeah. now. Right? What's going on? Hey, guys, sidebar. His uh, eyes get dark like Batman's at the beginning of the fucking uh, animated series where it's like his whole face is dark except for his eyes and they like squint. <laughs> and he goes, now, kill this man. Sidebar, real quick. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Likely, comedians, you know, we all just got to kind of go into the green room afterwards. Yeah, green room. Workshop. Talk some shit. Yeah. So let's just go over okay. here, guys. And then I open a door that I assume leads to a green room. Yes. There's a door in the void that leads to a room that is entirely green because he doesn't know what a green room is. Okay, guys. No m ms Look, oh, Hermie, I just like, so first of all, I'm still mad at you. And you're still my arch rival and enemy now because I found out that you're a dirty chaparral student. That said. We still care about you, and I just wanted to check in. It seemed to me like the vibes were good with your dad, but now you're saying they're bad? What's the deal? You don't like me, you idiot. What? <laughs> what do you What mean? you like is someone who withholds validation. What you need is somebody who tells you that you're a good, good boy, and no one in your life believes that you're a good, good boy, so you looked at me as this one person who seemed to show any amount of affection towards you, platonic or otherwise, and you said, ah, that's the guy I'm going for. Hey, you don't want me, you boy. want to self-validate, well, and I can't do that for you. I Look, okay, all right, that's fair, okay, okay, yeah, I mean, okay. You're seems, kinda, it just seems pretty valid to you're, me. You're kind of melting my brain a little bit. And my but, dad doesn't love me. My dad loves Goops and Jay Farid. I was a means to an end. That's what And I, I'm going to be the means to his end. No, okay, Hermie, <laughs> Hermie, yes, you're right. That's how I felt about you. But then I saw how much school spirit you have and that you did all this stuff to like, do you all know how long I've been looking for someone who cares about their school as much as I care about my school? I've never met, everyone thinks like, oh, the mascot's so dumb. Uh, who cares? Uh, uh, shut up, normal. Uh, <laughs> That's exactly what I think. Yeah, I know, scary. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, it's like there's two scaries in here. So Which I one just, do I shoot? <laughs> it's just, I feel like you and I are like a lot alike. We got a lot in common, you know? You, you play all these different parts. I got my part that I play and like, you know, I just like, I want to get to know you better. And yeah, you know, it's, we're young and you know we'd probably be like five years before we get married but like you know <laughs> whoa 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 yeah that's a long time to wait <laughs> oh my god look I'm just saying I have real feelings for you I think so you know I don't know where I was going with that but there it is even though and even though even though he betrayed you even especially though he betrayed me because it showed that he believes in something bigger than himself which is more than I can say for uh, some of the people in this room Oh, hey, hey, buddy. Wait, wait, what do you mean? Wait, yeah, yeah, what is that? Right. We're all in this together, man. I don't know. I kind of, maybe I threw that okay. out there a little too quickly. I didn't do what I did for the sake of the school, you buffoon. I don't have any school spirit. If <gasps> I'm like scary, I make the do 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 noise when people talk about school spirit. <gasps> I did all this because my dad, my dad wanted a scam, and so a scam he shall get. Well, I mean, I did it before I even knew that he was my dad or that that's how you got to him, but I just always had this, this desire in me to scam, to pull off some big coup, and I did it, and it was easy. It was, frankly, and he please strokes your chin, he goes, you are an easy mark, my friend. And I thought it would bring me happiness, and I thought getting in his good graces would bring me everything I wanted, like succession. But then he didn't give it to me, like succession. <laughs> and now I feel nothing, except for the desire to kill him, to get vengeance upon the man who stole my childhood away and stole my innocence. And well, so yeah. now you can be the instrument of that. So uh, I'll go on a date with you if you help me kill my dad. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, Wait, hey, normal, pause, he's scamming pause, you again. Yeah. 
What do you mean ruin your childhood? You have other parents. Like, my parents aren't, like, my biological dad, but, like, you have parents. We met your parents. Like, didn't you have a childhood? Yeah, I had adopted parents. They never understood me. They wanted well, me to study well and not cheat at things. They're, sounds they're great. practically virgins. Okay, I think well, they might be virgins. I think maybe that's why they adopted me. I mean, that's okay. Well, that's okay. Not everybody feels my like... My virgin parents. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Look, you can't understand this. Why not? Because you're dumb. Well, <laughs> all right, buddy. But like, a man needs to understand where he came from to know where he's going. And where I came from is alternately hell and the goof dimension. And I would rather destroy those things than acknowledge them that's where I came from and that's where I'm going. So, Hermie, you're more than where you came from, though. You're a work in progress, just like any of us. Yeah. And, like, I just, if you do something like that, like, patricide's like a heavy lift, dude. Like, that shit's going to stay with you forever. But and then like, you'll be free. Thank you. Scary gets it. Hermie, you said that you pulled this scam and you stole a school mascot uniform, breaking normal's heart here. What did you feel at the end of it? Satisfaction? At the end of, did you at the feel end of breaking normal's heart, I felt pretty tight. Pretty tight. Well, I mean, in that moment, because I was like, my dad's going to love this. But then your dad didn't. Correct. All that, I'm saying is this. And by the way, I put a small percentage chance on this. But what if you kill your dad and it doesn't bring you all the joy and feeling that you're looking for? That's a good point. Then I thought, I'll kill my other dad, Jody, in hell. That's oh. fair. Yeah. You can't solve all your problems by killing your dad, Hermie. <laughs> that sounds arguable. Have any of you ever killed your dad before? I, I know, like, it scary. seems like there's been art written about this for thousands of years. Yeah, I had a uh, summer where, like, every dream I had was about that. And whoa, whoa, to, what? Well, Look, yeah, this I isn't about me. It's not my decision. You guys need that anchor. My dad has it. What are you going to do to get it? Scam says, you guys won. No, here you go. Fuck it. Congratulations on winning. And he pulls out a scroll from his back pocket and he unfurls and it says, that's what she said on it. And you can feel in your heart that this is the anchor. It is the color and blue this is for true joy. true comedy. This is true comedy. This is the objectively funniest thing possible. And he oh. tosses it at you and he says, there you go. That was all right, a lot. let's destroy it. You know, let's all just think about Hermie, something we love. As I destroy this, I'm going to be thinking about the joy I get from seeing you. And I think about Hermie and I rip the thing in half. How honest do you think Normal is being with himself? Shit. Does he really genuinely like Hermie or is it just that he's chasing validation? Look, if chasing validation can't bring you joy, then I'm in the wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. Maybe it's a roll then. Give me a roll. I got a 14. Okay, so with a 14, that'll work. You rip into the anchor. It slices apart with a very satisfying little rip noise. That's what she said. And I can't imagine. <laughs> Dear God, no. And uh, you can feel that somewhere the doodler has gotten one more anchor removed from its body and that this one is one that's making it think of positive emotions in relation to humanity. Now, there are two anchors that have been broken with love versus the one that was broken with hate at the very beginning of the Normal, are you sure you're thinking about how much you love Hermie rather than how much you hate yourself? Oh. Well, I mean, ow. I, ow. I was just saying. No, I'm pretty sure I was thinking about how much joy I feel for the boy I like. Okay. I mean, that's, that's it is proof positive. I mean, I guess I don't care. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, a uh, scam says, well, if you want to, I can send you right back to the world you came from or, or, or whatever you need. Yeah, we don't have to... bet. No, wait. What? That would be bad. We do have like blood pack things oh, that we gotta figure out. Oh yeah, Mr. Likely. Mr. Scam. Yes. We have to kill you. Mm, you can try my little snickerdoodle. Well, I mean, we didn't say we have to try. We're just telling you the situation right now. Yeah, like, we got a blood pack. Look, yeah, to get in here, we had to set a blood pack with this little football headed guy. I'm wondering if there's some way we can scam that guy out of doing that. Like, or, if we just leave, can we just go? Like, Do we have these to laws, stick around? You know, like when you get a parking ticket at like a school, you don't have to pay it. <laughs> Let so me is see. that like Let this? Like, see. if we leave Goof from. So he snatches the blood pack out of your hand and he reads it and his lips move while he reads. He's one of those guys. And he says. <laughs> Oh, well, it looks like uh, if you don't kill me within two hours, then uh, Stewie will get supernatural powers and be able to stalk you across the realms and try to kill you in revenge. So that's something that will happen if you don't kill me. But that sounds kind of fun to me. I don't know. I, it's a baby, right? We, we fought babies before. We just punt that. We can <gasps> punt that problem somewhere. <laughs> God, wait. He doesn't scary. have a football-shaped head. What? We've already done this before. Yeah, roll, Scam roll perception. I got a um, very high score. I, I got, got a 17. 22. I got 12. This is the 17, 22, you realize that the baby that you fought in the past looks uncannily like a battle-damaged, <laughs> slightly older 
Stewie Griffin that you just didn't recognize as Stewie Griffin at the time. That whatever powers he is going to get are going to have the ability to move through time and space. <laughs> oh no, so we already fought him. So you and we been already fighting. won. So that means we definitely didn't do it then. We didn't kill Scam. Well, yeah, then I guess we don't but kill Scam. Here's what I was saying. is We've already done this, like, what's wrong? Like, if a trick is good once, trick again is what I say. So, like, you gotta... We- well put! <laughs> so, like... <laughs> Scam, like, I know, we're not, well, obviously we can't kill you, but could you, like, lay on the floor and pretend to be dead and scary, can you take a picture and we can send it? <laughs> we can send it to Scary. We can send it to the baby. Okay. Like, we did it. Yeah, I mean, like, babies- And just don't show yourself. Okay, so I take out my phone. Scam, can you act dead? Yep, here we go. Oh! And he, <laughs> Daniel Day-Lewis would be an envy of how well he portrays a corpse as he hits the ground, fingers gnarled, eyes dead and looking into the distance, and mouth then- open. Yeah, Scary um, takes a selfie with Scam, and then if you guys are in it, you're in it. Taylor also does that pose with that guy. Grant Gustin. What? That's Grant Gustin from The Flash doing this peace sign in front of the grave. Oh, that's a... Oh, wow. (laughs) Wow. Yeah, it's from The Flash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lincoln is going to do, like, the there's blood on my hands, like, sort of pose, like, behind the Scam likely. And then, Hermie, I could give you, like, a hug, like I'm consoling you on your dead dad in the background. No, I think everybody knows that I hate my dad, so I'll probably be tossing my head back and laughing like the Joker would. Then maybe you shouldn't be in the photo. Hermie can be in the photo if he wants to. All right, I'm laughing. Ha ha! And he arches his back and throws his head back. It's pretty funny. (laughs) Scary takes the photo and types Wow, you got Stewie Griffin's number. It's on the blood back. He gave you his number. Nice. Okay, and then sends a text with just did another thing. I know you don't know what I did the first time, but I did another thing. He sends you a voice memo back going, oh, I don't buy it. I think you have just made a new enemy today. <laughs> well, like, we can head. chalk that off the list. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Scary, what do you say? Um, Bite me. Say you'll be next. That way it's like, because next implies that like the first thing we did was killing. So yeah, I want yeah, to yeah, reiterate. Yeah, yeah. About to do a third thing. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Number block. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, well, well, thanks, Mr. Likely. That was a good attempt. Yeah, how do we get out of here? I can cut a quick portal through the dimensions if you want to get out of here. Where do you want to go? Well, the International Space Station. Uh, I was going to say Earth, but... International Space Station is over Earth. Oh, that's right, because your dad's there. Yeah, my dad's gone. Okay, well, that's, that's great, because your dad can also teleport people around, if I remember correctly. So if yeah. he's on the International Space Station, we get up there... It's like we a fu- stop. It's like when Google Maps tells you. Okay. You yeah, we're going to add a stop to see your dad and <sighs> make sure he's okay. And then we're going to go to Earth and get this last anchor, guys. We're so close to being done. I feel like there's important information that I got <laughs> from Willie that I'm forgetting to tell you. But I just don't care enough. Don't believe whatever that guy said. That guy sucked, right? Remember? Yeah, I don't believe whatever he says. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So if he told me something like about our dads or whatever, like I don't believe that. I don't buy Did that. He mm-hmm. put- I don't remember because I couldn't really care less. So Scam Likely pokes reality with a pinky finger with an elongated nail on it used for snorting cocaine and cuts a (laughs) hole into reality and you can see into the inside of the International Space Station and on the other side you see your dad, Nick. Oh, great. What's my dad look like? He's got no arms and no legs and he's biting the handholds on the space station to move himself around and then he goes, oh, oh, hey man, what's up? Dad! Yeah, that's me. I turned to scary. I'm still gonna kill you. (laughs) But for now. You're off the hook. Dad, I'm here to rescue you. All right. Oh, Can okay. you open portals? No, of course I can. I would have opened a portal out of here. Can you come oh, in here? Point. Well, yeah, come over here. Scam says, well, that sounds boring. Well, you're just going to take him out of here and then go back to Earth? That sounds really dull. Drama! And he t- pulls out a gun. <laughs> <laughs> right before he says drama, he was tying himself to the stake in the ground. And then he goes, drama! Pulls out a gun that says drama on it, shoots the window, <gasps> blows it outward, and the vacuum from the International Space Station's window exploding outward also sucks all of you through the portal as well. Everyone hold your breath! Hey, that really sucks, lady! Wait, 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 what are you doing? Oh! You all get sucked through the portal and through the window into the bleakness of outer space. So you're all now in the vacuum of space, and you have- Is Hermie with us? Hermie's with you. (gasps) You have two turns before all of you die of asphyxiation. And Mm. our blood boiling. And your blood boils. And then we feel our our saliva boil in our mouths. We got a kiss, right? (laughs) That's how you exchange oxygen. Fucking steal my Mm. move, Matt. Hermie's like, this is how you do it? (laughs) That would work. (laughs) Okay, listen, everyone fucking pay attention. We're in 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 the most dangerous situation we've ever been in. We're in the vacuum of space. Quick perception check as a yes. bonus action to understand what kind of debris. What are my moves right here? Yeah, Other debris. Well. I'm looking for oxygen tanks or any sort of pressurized containers that got blown out at the same time as the bullet. I got a 19 okay. perception check. 
Okay. Uh, I'm just what did you get, Google Freddy? How to survive in space? Thirteen. Okay, so Freddie, you can see that there is basically an ocean of space detritus orbiting the planet. It's almost like Earth has a ring around it of just pure satellite garbage space trash. Hey, and satellite garbage space trash would be a great name for a band. She uh, thought to herself because she couldn't speak. <laughs> and Link, you see a dead astronaut, his body limply floating around with an oxygen pack attached to his suit. Question, where is the doodler? The doodler was like a hundred feet above the earth. Yes, the doodler, it moves non-Euclideanly. So when you mm. look up, when you look around you, all you can see is the earth and then surrounding you and surrounding the earth, still the doodler. Like if you kept moving upward, it would continually seem to be a hundred feet above oh. you. Oh, so it's like the staircase in Mario. It's exactly like the staircase in Mario. <laughs> oh, shit. So we are like space height. You were at space height, yes. Damn. We're in space. But you can see beneath you, the earth is very, very big. And you can feel yourself getting a little bit warm. So... If you were to hypothetically live long enough, uh, the gravitational pull would pull you into the atmosphere and you'd probably get burned up. In okay, I guess well, I'm this is a predicament. Oh, I have a thing. Finally, finally, Please. I cast banishment. Yes. Okay. Uh, Who and how? I do so, it on everybody. Uh, I'm so excited that I finally get to cast banishment. I can only banish one person to another pocket dimension for one minute. But if we're all holding hands? No, that's not going to work. <laughs> if, we all, if we all get married, Anthony, under the law of God. You become one person. You become one person. Yeah, if you can really quickly find out that one of you is ordained and then have them do the right silently in space and sign a marriage I license. Look at, I look at Nick, the only chance, and I make the sign of the cross and then like shrug. And Nick nods. He, oh. he is indeed a universal life church minister. <laughs> Now all you need to do is get five marriage licenses, <laughs> technically be in Utah. Okay, okay, does it work? Okay. Wait, are we floating over Utah right now? You are floating over, you're in international waters, you can do whatever you want. No, space you, air, is in, you there, can be polygamous in space. There is actual, there's an actual airspace distance for like, so Utah owns everything up until, I don't know what the distance is. Like oh, you're saying height. there's an upper ceiling limit. Yeah, there's an upper ceiling limit of, of property. Well, then who owns it after that? It's space, it's nobody's. And there's international law about it. That's how we can all toss satellites up there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't like, yeah. It's not like if you own a house, you own your house up to infinity. But <laughs> hear me out. What if I did? What okay. if I did, though? Every time Anthony, the moon's Anthony's over my house, I'm like, <laughs> mine! Wait, 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 wait. We're waiting. Okay. <laughs> so the spell says, if the target is native to a different plane of existence than the one you're on, the target is banished with a faint popping noise returning to its home plane. And then basically, I can banish them for one minute. However, comma. One minute in Earth time here oh. is how many minutes wherever I banish the other person? Oh, if, sure. If you so, banish Nick, the hope is that he can get his limbs back. Yeah. How far, how, what shit. is the time dilation between here and hell? Which I would say is Nick's main domain. He would have weeks. He would have weeks. Okay. So if I banish Nick back to hell, Nick can go get someone to rescue us from outside of outer space. Like he can show up with like a hell spaceship or something. It's definitely like worth that. doing to see if anything, yeah, if yeah. Nick Banish shows Nick. up. Banish Nick. I look at Nick and I explain all of that, but my mouth isn't moving, <laughs> but I can't say any <laughs> of it. And your saliva's boiling in uh, your mouth. And then I cast banishment on Nick. Okay. And so I, I hold I, my breath for one minute. We still have all of a turn in case like, I'm just assuming, or should we just see if that? Does You're all going to have to kiss me to give you your, me your oxygen. Why don't, why don't you try your one. turn anyway? Because whatever happens, it's not going to happen right away. Okay. Since I saw the astronaut, I guess I'm going to try to float over and grab the oxygen tank or see what's up with that body. I'm just in the D and dad's item searching portal space. <laughs> <laughs> I'm casting spells. You're in his dad item sheet. We are not the same. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you can find that the body inside is all desiccated and old, that if you opened up... you, Who you is could, that? Clint Eastwood from Space Cowboys. It'd be Tommy Lee Jones. He was the one on the moon. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, wow. You can, if you want to, uh, open the helmet and remove Tommy Lee Jones' skeleton and get inside. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I want to grab the oxygen tank and see if there's like, can it give us like, well, if look, I pass it around, can we each get like quick, an extra turn? Quick. It's the lev, right? Or whatever it's called. It's the little, it's a little like, yeah, the, the, the recliner of space. Oh yeah, yeah the yeah. little boost pack. Yeah, I essentially want to rig myself up. I sit on this. Sit on Tommy yeah. Lee Jones' skeleton's lap. Yeah. Like Santa Claus and pilot and, the fucking Yeah, and start suit. piloting towards everybody. Okay. I want to grab, I want everybody to sit on my lap. <laughs> give me, give me dexterity roll. 17. Ooh. Okay. I can pilot. So yeah, much like Randy Quaid, you can fly. You're a pilot. Okay. But it's not really nothing. <laughs> the oxygen is not really going to help because it's like probably once I open up the suit, it just like. It just. Psh, yeah, outwards, okay. yeah. But yeah. you can move though. But, but yeah. you can move. So I'm moving towards you all. I'm trying to gather everybody so we're together. Taylor's like. Mm -hmm, and like flailing for you. Okay. I have no debris around me, right? Let There's me a lot of debris around you. You might say like I got to you on my turn. Sure. Yeah. 
you're holding on to his his space recliner. And then I'm going to let me think, let me think, let me think. Oh, what would Taylor have on him? Does Taylor have an inhaler? You have never mentioned it before. Yeah, well, just people can have asthma, Anthony. Inhalers don't have oxygen. They it's have not, albuterol. Exactly, but albuterol being expelled with the help of an aerosol propellant. Any amount of force has an equal and opposite reaction. <laughs> Beth, it's a little thing that Isaac Newton found, that's and that's what Taylor's... trying to move around? We got a jetpack thing. I know, I'm trying to help you with it. Okay, I we're did not pilot. expect this episode to go to outer space. <laughs> that was not on my list of things that when I was preparing <laughs> my good. Kite 5, I was like, we're going to be in space. So me and Freddie are kind of like Wally and, and Eve. Eve just is kind of zooming around right now. I guess we're heading towards since it's yeah, her turn next. Half, we're heading to, yeah, and I'll yeah, say yeah, this. Yeah, you're the worst part of Wally. No, that's the best part in the back half of the back half. Yes, correct. I'll say this. I think that Peter Gabriel song kind of slaps. It does. It's got a synth that goes. All right, we're each. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine towards scary because it's scary's turn now. All right, scary's turn. Two boys in a jetpack flying towards you. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm looking. Beth is looking frantically through all the (laughs) items. Also, search for air. Oxygen. You do a dice roller, and then you get a random item. You I find, should. Yeah. And then just see what. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just yeah. leave it to the god in space, yeah. just like I did with Tori. Five. How many numbers are there? Just like thousands. All right. Do you want to do like a random number between one and a thousand or something? Ra- uh, yeah. A random number between one and three thousand. Seven hundred forty-five. <laughs> so this is just an item that's floating in this international space. Yeah. You station. just see it floating <laughs> through the space in front of you. Item seven Good four number. five. Holy shit! What? 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 <laughs> okay, 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 okay. This is not as cool as it sounds, but I got so excited. Okay, okay. This is an item submitted by Aaron Lysel. That's L I S L E. And it's the Telebangle, a magical bracelet that appears differently to each person. It appears as a bracelet that goes well with your current outfit. However, when the bangle is worn, it will teleport the wearer somewhere within a 60 foot radius of the wearer. If the bangle is removed, the cooldown is reset. What cooldown? I don't know. Um, the cooldown of like using it again. So we can get 60 feet closer to Earth. Yeah, but like, if there's something, if there's like, okay, if I roll perception and there's like, a uh, spaceship 60 <laughs> feet away. 60 feet away? Okay, roll perception. It's an eight. So with an eight, you can see a... Spaceship 10,000 miles away. You can see a spaceship, <laughs> but there's a big gash in the center of it, and it is 62 feet away. <laughs> okay, okay. I, have a, I, will, I have my move. All, right. all of a sudden, like, my fucking pupils dilate as, like, all kinds of shit starts to make sense. I look at Scary and I point at the spaceship. I'm like, how far away is it? Let me roll for perception. No, no, but you know, though, it's 62 feet away. He just told you. There's an American space shuttle (laughs) that you see that is 62 feet away and it has a huge gash in the side of it. It's got Clint Eastwood is dead in that one. Clint Eastwood's dead in that one. Bruce Willis is dead. Bruce Willis is dead. Oh, yeah, Bruce Willis is dead. (laughs) Oh, God. I ask, how far away is it? By my estimate, 62 feet. You, sh- you finger six and two? <laughs> That's what she said. That's what, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, and then I nod. And now, Anthony, you stupid little <laughs> fucking boy. I want to tell <laughs> Anybody else hard? Just me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Was- I want to estimate how much relative speed the space shuttle is moving relative to a geosynchronous satellite that is within view. Okay. This is going to be important because I'm going to cast Ethereal-ness, a seventh level spell, which allows me to step into the you border. Level seven spells? I got one. I, I bought it for the, as a bonus of a thing. I step <laughs> he bribed me. I step into he the, buys a bonus of a thing. No, no, it's My like mom's a, rich. I get seventh level spells. <laughs> My dad works at seventh level company. <laughs> you step into a border region of the ethereal plane in the area where it overlaps with our current plane. I remain in the border ethereal for the duration or until I use the action to dismiss the spell. During this time, move in any direction, move up or down. Every foot of movement costs an extra foot. I can see and hear the plane I originated from, but everything there looks gray, and I can't see anything more than 60 feet away. I'll hear this. In this plane. Is this fucking French fries all over again? What's happening? In this plane, (laughs) blah, 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 I'm in it. However, (laughs) when the spell ends, at my choosing, I immediately return to the plane I originated from in the spot I currently occupy. So think about this. No, I get it. We're in space. Uh I disappear. It's not that complicated. I disappear. In my ethereal plane perception, I wait until, because there's a spot stuck in the center of the universe. It's not orbiting Earth. It's stopped, yeah. which means in a split second, Everything's the, moving around you. Yeah, the okay. spaceship, I'm going to be in it, and I'm just dismiss the smell when I'm back inside the spaceship. The okay, that's fun. So yeah, you do that. Okay. We yeah. Also have, cool. Now you're inside the mangled spaceship. Now you, you see- fused with the wall of the spaceship. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, 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 no. Ah, hold on, hold on. If, also, we now have a bracelet to If I occupy the same spot as a solid object or creature... 
I'm immediately shunted to the nearest unoccupied space, Great. and it takes okay. some damage. And I take damage. So okay. you and Bruce Willis's corpse are inside of this mangled open space shuttle. But only okay. Taylor. But only Taylor. Is there only a ton of okay. oxygen in there? I, uh, you can see that there are other unoccupied spacesuits in there, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's my spell, and then my sort of like movement stuff. I want to try and just, you know, get into a spacesuit. Okay. Cool, you get inside one. Is that I simple? Got- what? <laughs> Why he's spending his whole movement, right? Okay, like, so that yeah, was yeah. that was an action and a movement, and there's nobody inside of it, so it's not even hard for him. And to the spacesuit, the spacesuit, the spacesuit's oxygen- notoriously easy to put on. <laughs> <laughs> and, has oxygen, and has oxygen. And has oxygen. Oh, well, he hasn't turned it on yet. Who knows if it actually works? <laughs> okay, he's just in a spacesuit now. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to try this one thing that might not work at all, even like comedically, but okay. So dot dungeons and daddies yes, dot com. Yes. I'm going to cast contact other plane. Okay. You mentally contact a demigod, the spirit of a long dead sage or some other mysterious entity from another plane. Contacting this intelligence can strain or even break your mind. When you cast the spell, make a DC 15 intelligence saving throw. On a failure, you take 66 psychic damage and are insane. That's problematic until you finish a long rest. While insane, you can't take actions or can't understand what other people say. On a successful save, you can ask the entity up to five questions. <laughs> so, so, well, I'm just going to ask for a favor, maybe. Oh, okay. From whom? Shoot your shot. From the doodler. <gasps> <gasps> what? Oh, okay. First, you got to save, so give okay. me that roll. I'm not going to use this dice, because this is the dice I used on that one. Beth, if you chew red vines while you make that roll. <laughs> Those red vines are gone, huh? Yeah, the red vines go flowing off into space. <sighs> Fuck, I got a 13. So that means mm-hmm. what? I'm insane. I can't talk or do anything. So you have space madness. <laughs> <laughs> this is my, this is my favorite Disneyland ride. I should have ride. used the other dice. <laughs> All right, so you begin I, to look so into the cool, soul. Though. I no, wanted that's... to be on the tide of the doodler. Ah, you, too much. you look this into the good. soul of the doodler and the mere, before you can even open your mouth to ask a question, the contrasting emotions and everything drives you just as mad as an almost drove Larkin, what's his face, normal. <laughs> you look into the eye of madness and the eye of madness stares back and you're in space. So it, the enormity of that really gets to you. And, uh, <laughs> you hate to see it. Yeah. Like your next album is gonna be so good. Yeah. Like you just lost so much. Yeah. It's yeah. like Beatles after they came back from <laughs> India. Okay. Do you take damage? 66. 66, 66 damage? Yep. 6 D6 oh, of damage. Geez. So that's everybody's end of turn. Oh, what about Hermie? Oh. Does Hermie kiss normal to give him his oxygen so the normal can hold his breath longer? No, Hermie opens his arms up and embraces the void. <laughs> so okay, <laughs> that's the end of the turn. At that moment. Nick pops back into existence and he's holding a bunch of signs and some paper. <laughs> and he goes, and the first sign says, I'm so sorry. And he throws that one away. He says, this was the best idea I had. I'm so sorry. throws that away. There's nothing, that's, there's nothing that's oxygen proof in hell. He throws that one away. And the time dilation went faster than I thought. And he throws that away. And he goes, okay, you all have to get married now. And he throws that one away. And he produces uh, five separate uh, uh, marriage licenses <laughs> with five separate gravity independent pens. And... Uh, <laughs> To me, you are perfect. (laughs) (laughs) And he throws them at you, and then he really quickly looks around, and he takes out another piece of paper, and he writes on it. He goes, where's Taylor? And then Taylor kind of comes floating out. Does the suit work? Please tell me it works. Uh, Roll. (laughs) There's no way. But for now, let me say, without hope or agenda, just because it's Christmas... 13. 13. So with a 13, there's no oxygen, but you are at least protected from some of the heat from the sun and the earth. Ah, solar radiation. It's a real killer. My favorite thing about that sign is that he says, say the carol singers, and my brain every single time goes, who is carol singers? <laughs> <laughs> Link, I mean, Link is just signing. and He just looks at Nick like, this is the only option, clearly. Taylor now just has a... <laughs> Eyes bleeding, he signs. Taylor has a space suit, and he also like pushes out from the spaceship. The corpse of Bruce Willis attached to it. No. Uh, he pushes out from the... Dang, I had a good plan, too. Uh, and he like comes over, but he's in a space suit. All- Okay. And he signs. And he signs. But Hermes just embracing death? Is that well, what's well, going then he, on right now? But then he sees Nick come back and he opens his eyes. He's like confused. And he starts like trying to, I mean, he's just floating in space. So he's just like, uh. and then Nick uses a rocket pack that he brought with him to move a little bit. To, well, there's no noise. So it's <laughs> <laughs> as he, as he gets closer to you. I don't know why I even opened my mouth and made no noise. So yeah, Nick is zooming around getting signatures from everybody. All right. I signed the paper. <laughs> I'm like, who do I, do, are we all marrying each other? Do we all have to pair off? What's going on? We got to become one person under the eyes of the Lord. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so what are you going to do, Scary? Child wedding. Oh, um, <laughs> scary, sounds, sounds, sounds scary signs, um, <laughs> scary signs, Terry, and that's when you know something is deeply wrong. <gasps> wow. Oh, wow. She signs Terry and a heart. Wow. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, my God. Hermie signs Hermie, and then he says in parentheses, but I'm not explicitly married 
to Taylor, who is my uncle, or I'm his uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Link, so Link knowing contract army. law in his many years uh, as an adult when he was in a video <laughs> game. Like, as he passes it over, like, scratches that part out. Like, really important. We're all married. <laughs> and, 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 and he would also know he needs to get her to initial up <laughs> any changes that he's made to the doc. I look around and I just forge his initials. <laughs> I'll take this crime later. I know this contract has to be fucking airtight. If this is the plan, look, it's not my fault. If this is the plan we're going they with. They can annul it. They can get it annulled. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can get, get it annulled. <laughs> All right, so Nick pulls out another set of signs. He goes, okay, <laughs> do, you, do you take each other to be each other's people? <laughs> <Not> <laughs> normal nods. Taylor thumbs ups enthusiastically. Scary nods enthusiastically. Hermie space sighs and nods. <laughs> and then he pulls out another one and says, by the power invested in me by space, I declare you all married. <laughs> And now you are, you feel you are one, one person. <laughs> Legally, God. under God, you are one union soul. We all hold hands. Everyone holds hands in yep. normal cast banishment. Okay, what happens? What does <laughs> We go back to here one yeah, minute do later. You just go back right here. <laughs> Then we come back here one minute later. Yeah, but one minute later is still space. <laughs> shit, but we can oh, hold no, it back. Shit. No, but no, no, it isn't. Because Earth is moving relative to <laughs> the rest of the insane. universe. Not in a minute. You think in a minute it's going to okay, move Freddy, so I much? Say, though, How I fast will, do you think Earth wait, moves? Freddie, Freddie, wait, really quick, though. I will say, not to, not to don't bite you, but if that's the way that spell works, that means... Anytime you use it, yes. like in combat, it doesn't work because Earth is hurtling thousands of miles per hour. So I mean, 67,000 miles right. an hour. What you're saying is that if you use this on your feet on Earth with an atmosphere and you used it, sorry, you're in the crust now when you come back. <laughs> sorry, you're at say, sun. You're at the sun now. It would be nice if we portaled to like a realm that was all like space. Base survival equipment and then <laughs> portal back. Wait, wait. Is there like a is there like a teleport realm? Is there okay. a realm where we can so, teleport okay. to other so places? The tar- <laughs> if the target is native to a different plane of existence, which all is all of us, all of you, yeah. okay, then the one you're on, and none of us are from Earth. No, no. The target is banished with a faint popping noise, returning to its home plane. Oh, home planet. And home, home plane. Home plane. If yeah. the spell ends before one minute has passed, the target reappears in the space it left or in the nearest unoccupied space if that space is occupied. Otherwise, the target does not return. Oh, so okay. as long as I continue to cast the spell for more than a minute, we'll all go back to San Dimas, I guess. <laughs> so c- can we do this? Can we teleport back to our home plane? Yeah, I think you get. I, I and think go you get, to where there are space suits. Yes, I was gonna say you get forty-eight hours in your home plane to try to prepare yourselves for the inevitable <laughs> getting yoinked back to that exact spot. <laughs> yes, yes, this is, this is what we do. We go and we all field trip to the Air and Space well, Museum. Get, let's teleport. Let's get there for like. Let's teleport. Okay, yeah, there. let's so not teleport to a cast bus. banishment, and everyone winds up back in San Dimas. Wait, wait, this is important. Do we show up at Normal's house, or can we show up anywhere in that realm? Uh, I feel like anywhere in that realm. Okay, I, mean, like, I think the, it's, I mean. Oh, you don't want to show it like JPL or something? Like, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. JPL's not that far from San Dimas, dude. That's what I'm dude. saying. But like, that's... I, all right, fine. Right, I, no, no, it's your spell. It just says returning to its home plane. You're right. So yeah, yes, Normal tries to remember where JPL is <laughs> and gives it his best shot. Okay, so you go to JPL. We come out of the teleport at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena. <laughs> you pair randomly in the middle of one of the labs and everybody's like, Whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> and they're freaked out that you just managed to operate here and they go, what's going on? Well, for one thing, we just got married. <laughs> <laughs>
Dungeons and Daddies is Matt Arnold as Lincoln Lee Wilson. Anthony Birch is our DM. Will Campos as Normal Oak. Beth May is Scary Marlowe and myself. Freddie Wong is Taylor Swift. Thank you to our special guest this week, Tori Shaw. Tori, where can people find you? On Instagram, they can find me at 10 Steps to My Dream, and that's 10 the number. Also special thanks this week to Aaron Leslie, who submitted a magical item that came in handy and we used during the campaign. You can submit items, names, things that we use if you're a Patreon supporter. More on that in a second. Our theme song is On My Way by Max and Waller. Brian Fernandez is our content producer. Ashley Nicola is our community manager. Courtney Terry is our community coordinator. Esther Ellis is our lead editor. Travis Reeves provides additional editing. And Robin Rapp is our transcriber. Thank you to all of our Patreon supporters, people like Jennifer Howlett, Gi Young Lee, Matt, Aaron Lightbody, Seraph16, Michael Oyervides, Brett Ramsey, the ghost of a good moment, Markia, Alyssa. Dr. Beanburger, Duchess V. Delphi, X. Weldo, Brendar, Preston, Rashidul Kader, Matthew Williams, Cove, T. Rad, and Brandon Snook. Some exciting news for us to announce. We're going to be doing our first ever live show in a live setting at Rooster Teeth Expo this year. That's happening July 7th through the 9th in Austin, Texas. We're going to be doing a live show. We're going to be showing up on some panels. We're going to be selling merch. We're going to be smelling pretty funky by the end of the weekend. You know, the usual convention shenanigans that everyone knows and loves. You can find more about this at rtxaustin.com and we hope to see you out there. And are you all caught up with our show? Are you thirsty for more? Well, you can get it and support the show directly. You can do it at patreon.com slash Dungeons and Dads, where starting at $5 a month, you get access to hours of bonus content, bonus one-shot campaigns, our thriving community discord, ad-free episodes, and gobs and heaps more. You can see everything that you get at dungeonsanddaddies.com slash Patreon. And if you are so inclined, you may support us directly at patreon.com slash Dungeons and Dads. It means a lot. We appreciate it. Our Twitter is Dungeons and Dads. Our website, Dungeons and Daddies. Our store, store.dungeonsanddaddies.com. Our subreddit is Dungeons and Dice. Our next episode, June 5th. We will see you then. We gotta pick ourselves up and say, Not today, no, not today. We live for tomorrow. Bake, steal, and borrow. Brave where we can't change. We gotta pick ourselves up and say, Not today, no, not today. I don't need your sorrow. Come back tomorrow. Bless you. I got Joker makeup in my nose. <laughs> <laughs>